Hey guys, how's it going? This is the Helpful Lockpicker here. And the video I have for you today is going over how we can decode one of these dial combination locks in eight attempts or less and in just a few minutes. More information is coming up on this topic in just a second. Please stay tuned. All right, so let's get started. The first thing you're gonna need to do is be able to open up one of these locks very consistently. And if you need a refresher on how to open up one of these locks when you have the correct combination, what I'm gonna do is put a link up on the top here, and that will give you a strong overview on how these locks work, and then you can pick up the video right here where you left off. So when we first start to mechanically manipulate these locks, we can get three sets of numbers. The first number we're gonna find is gonna be called the sticky number, and then the second and third number are gonna be called the guess numbers. These numbers are going to help us determine the final combination of the lock, and I'm gonna get into it right now on how we're gonna be able to get started with decoding this lock. All right, so we're ready for step one, which is going to be finding the sticky number. In order to get the sticky number, we are going to mechanically manipulate the dial, and we will be able to write that down. In order to do this, we are going to turn the lock clockwise several times just to completely reset the lock. Now we're gonna put some tension on the shackle and we're gonna pull up until it starts to seize the lock. This is gonna be too much tension and we're gonna need to let off just a hair so we can start turning the lock. In order to find the sticky number, what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn the dial clockwise with our eyes closed and we're gonna keep turning until the dial stops on a number. So it just stopped on nine, it just stopped on three, but we're just gonna keep going until we can consistently get the same number. It stopped on three again, it stopped on three again, and it stopped on three again. And now that I'm on three, I'm just gonna turn past it. You almost feel like you gotta go over a little hump, and that is another great indication that you are on the correct number. So since I was able to get three, three times in a row, and it felt like it had some resistance when I turned past it, I'm going to write down three as my sticky number. You need to remember this number. It is going to be very important down the road. So let's get started with the next steps. All right, so we're ready for step two, which is finding the two guess numbers. These two numbers are going to lie between zero and 11, and we're going to be able to get these numbers by mechanically manipulating the dial counterclockwise. In order to do this, what we're going to need to do is apply heavy tension to the shackle, and we're going to start to turn it. The number that we're going to find is going to sit in the middle of two half numbers. So as we immediately start off here, you can see that we're between 39.5 and 0 0.5. So that is between two half numbers. So we're going to write down 0 as our first guess number. We're gonna let off the shackle, and then we're gonna put back on the tension, and then we're gonna find the next one. So now we have jumped into 2.5 and 3.5. You can see that we're between two half numbers, so we're gonna write down three as our second guess number. But just to illustrate what would be a wrong number, we're gonna go down the rest of the way. You can see that this one is between six and seven. Those are exactly on whole numbers, so those will not be the correct numbers. And then you can see the next one is between nine and 10. So what we're gonna need to do is just write down our two guess numbers and we're going to move on to the next step. All right, so we're moving on to step three, which I call the math. Step three can be broken down into three parts. Part A is gonna be called finding the first digit to our combination. Part B is going to be finding the third digit to our combination. And then part C is going to be finding the eight possibilities to the second digit of our combination. And I'm gonna get more into this right now. I would like to first start off by saying for the scope of this video, we are not gonna be focusing on the why, we're gonna be focusing on what we need to do to get the correct combination to our lock. So we have now moved on to step three, and we're going to be doing part A, which is finding the first digit to our combination. What we need to do is remember back to what the sticky number was that you found earlier. In our example on this lock, our sticky number was the number three. So what we're gonna to need to do is take our number three, we're going to need to add the number five to it, 
and that is going to give us the first digit to our combination. In this example, our first digit is going to be the number 8, and we're going to write that down, and we're also going to need to use that in the further steps. All right, so we're going to be moving on to part B, finding the third digit to our combination. And this is where it can get a little bit tricky, but I'll try to have you follow along. So we're going to need to go back to part A for one second and just recall the first digit to our combination that we found, which was the number 8. On your lock, it may be different, but on this particular lock, it is going to be 8. What you're going to want to do is divide 8 by 4. For every single lock, it is always going to be divided by 4. That will be a constant. The most important thing you're going to note when you do out this division is what the remainder is. So 8 divided by 4 is going to be 2 with a remainder of 0. Depending on the number that you had for your first combination, you may have a remainder of 0, remainder of 1, 2, or 3. Write down this remainder and it's going to be very important when you are following along. So now we're going to need to go back to what our guess numbers were. On this particular example, we saw that the two guess numbers were 0 and 3, and we're going to now make a little chart. So we're going to write down 0 and 3, and then going across, we're going to add 10 to them three times. So I'm going to have 0, 10, 20, and 30, and then we're going to have 3, 13, 23, and 33. So these are going to be possible combinations to your lock, but in order to refine this further, we're going to do a couple steps. We're going to remember what the remainder was when we did the first number of our combination divided by 4. On this particular example, it turned out to be 0, but for you it may be 0, 1, 2, or 3. So please remember to use the remainder that you found. In order to find the two possibilities, what we're going to do is divide each one of these numbers by the constant divisor of 4, and we're going to note the remainder. When you find a number with the same remainder, it is going to be a possibility. So 0 divided by 4 equals 0 with a remainder of 0, which you can see here. 10 divided by 4 is not going to have a remainder of 0. It's not an even division. 20 divided by 4 is going to be 5 with a remainder of 0 and that is going to be a possibility. So we're going to go through each one of these numbers and we're going to make sure that the remainder that you find when you divide it by 4 is equal to the remainder that you found on your lock and when you find those two numbers they are going to be two possibilities to the third combination of your lock and now I'm going to show you how we can refine that one step further. Now we've been able to determine that 0 and 20 are two possibilities for the third combination of our lock if we'd like to further refine that, what we can do is mechanically manipulate the lock and eliminate one choice. This is a very great thing to do because that will reduce your total possibilities from 16 down to 8 once we get all the numbers. So I'm just going to turn the dial a few times and we're going to stop on each number. So we're going to go over to 20, we're going to put heavy tension on the shackle, and then we're going to try turning the dial. That feels very tight. And then we're going to go over to 0. When we get over to zero, we're going to put heavy tension on. You're going to notice that zero just feels a lot looser than 20 did. The number that feels looser is going to be the last digit to your combination. So at this time, we can safely eliminate 20 as a possibility. And that will bring our total combinations down to eight once we find the second combination. All right, so we're moving on to part C, finding the second digit to our combination lock. So this is going to be all about remainders, and it may get a little bit confusing, and I'm going to do my best so you can follow along. So we're going to need to recall back to part B, where we found the remainder to our lock. On the example that we have in front of us, the remainder was 0, but your remainder may be 0, 1, 2, or 3. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that remainder and substitute it in. So we're going to make a chart like this. In order to get these numbers, in the first row we're going to take our remainder, which in this example was 0, and we're going to add 2 to that. So 0 plus 2 is going to be 2. So I'm going to put that 2 down right here. When we move on to the second row, we're going to take our remainder, we're going to add 2 to it, and then we're going to add 4 to it. So 0 plus 2 plus 4 is equal to 6. Another way to look at this is you can take the number from the first row and you can simply just add 4 to it. 
So how we make this chart is we're going to take these two numbers here and we're going to add 8 to them and we're going to do that four times going across. So we're going to get 2, 10, 18, 26, 34, 6, 14, 22, 30, 38. If we pass the number 39 and we get to the number 40, we need to remember that 40 is the number 0 and for example 41 would be the number 1. So what you're seeing in front of us here is 10 possibilities. If you remember correctly, I said that we're going to be able to get this down to 8 possibilities. So there's one thing that we're going to need to understand is that when we look at our third digit that we are able to eliminate down to 0. The second and third digit cannot be 2 away. They need to be greater than 2 digits away. So what we're going to need to do is just look through all the numbers and see what we can eliminate. So you can see that 2 is within 2 from 0, so we're going to be able to eliminate that choice. And then we're going to look over to 38. 38 is also 2 away from 0, so we're going to be able to eliminate that choice. And this has now left us with just 8 possibilities for the second number. So at this point, we have now found the first digit, we have found 8 possibilities for the second digit, and we have found the third digit. And now we're going to move on to part 4, which is going to be testing it out. All right, so we are moving on to step four, which is often the most fun and the most stressful step, which is testing out the numbers that we are able to find. So we have the first digit is eight, and then we have the second digit is eight possibilities, and the third digit is zero. I have listed here an alternate possibility, just in case we weren't exactly sure on the third digit or we did not test it. The only difference is going to be the third digit may also be 20, and then I'm going to have crossed out 18 and 22 because those numbers are two away. So let's get a close-up of unlocking this lock and testing out the numbers. All right, so let's try out the combinations based off of the list that we were able to put together. So the first combination is going to be 8, and then we are going to try 10. So we're going to pass 10 once, and we're going to go over to it, and then we're going to do 0 for the third number, and we didn't get it. And we're just going to keep going through our list until we get the lock open. So I'm just going to reset it. Now I'm going to go to the next one, which is going to be 8. We're going to pass 18 once, and then we're going to go over to 18 here, and turn right over to 0. And we were able to get the lock open, so the combination to this lock is going to be 8, 18, 0. This is something that is really fun to learn, and I really recommend you guys try it out. What I'm going to do is put a link in the description below of a little Google document I put together that might be able to help you be able to understand this in more detail. And also I'll put a few links to some of these locks in the description below if you'd like to check them out. But either way guys, this is all that I have for you today. This is how you can decode a dial combination lock in just a few minutes, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you guys have any questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more like it, please subscribe. As always, thank you so much for checking out this video, and I hope you all have a great day. And just thank you so much for checking this out.